Well, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, know when to walk away and know when to run. And I think I'm going to run after seeing this nasty, torn up 1344 QPVM that I got in the shop here. Let me show you what I am talking about. Sorry to waste your time with my awful Kenny Rogers rendition there. But what we have here first off is just, well, just a disgusting 1344Q Sony PVM. We're going to start here at the front and there's just a nasty film on this tube and I don't even really want to touch it. It's just kind of grossing me out. <laughs> so the biggest and scariest part of this whole thing is right here. Check this out. You get some additional light. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit. We got like a glob here of just hair hanging out the bottom and side of the bezel. I mean, how just awful. Look at that. It's actually stuck inside there. So it's not, it's not like stuck on the bottom. It's stuck in the shell right up in between the bezel and the shell. I hope there's not like, uh, I don't know anything else in there, but we'll find out. I'm looking at this thing and some other things that tell me this has already been messed with a lot. Probably first off, these screws are not standard that we have being used in here. These are uh, just uh, different screws than the ones that Sony actually sold with the monitor originally. So that shows me that somebody's removed the original screws, use these screws to replace it. Right next to that, you'll see a lovely crack in this bezel. And then if we look down here, we've actually got where uh, uh, some of the bezel has, see how it's pushed away from the tube. If we keep going, things don't get much better. So up here, we've got screws that again, do not match. And then we go back here to the back and this is where things get real frightening. We got a big chunk missing out from our back here on our plastic. Now, thankfully I do have a new shell here, or I mean a replacement shell, which would fit this monitor if we can get the rest of it working. And I may have an, a bezel available, but uh, there, see that crack is all the way down there. So this definitely took a fall. And again, we have non-standard screws and actually no screws down here holding the input board and out board. These rivets, these are not the same rivets. Now maybe they are doing it. They seem like they're doing a good job to hold this in. So that's encouraging to see that somebody found a replacement rivet, but this is not the original rivets that were with this monitor. So, oh boy, well, let me remove this shell and then we'll come back and see what's going on inside. And hopefully that hair, I don't know what, hopefully it just disappears, but oof. let's see. Oh. oh gosh, oh look at that thing. Holy crap. I bet that's a dog hair. There's no way that's human. A raccoon or something. Awesome. Oh. Thankfully nothing else in there. <laughs> Alright everybody, check this out. So I was over here just working on this uh PVM and then I look down in here and no wonder that corner is loose it's missing the entire screw that's supposed to be there that's holding the tube and the uh, shield and everything to the actual bezel so I don't know whether it's stripped out oh I see look it looks like it's broken off and snapped off oh goodness this is yeah I bet that's a piece of plastic down there for it and that's why it's not in there anymore I was going to say I have about, you know, plenty of replacements here that I've salvaged over the years from working on PVMs, extra hardware. And uh, so I had one, so we can we could try to see if we go in there, but it looks like maybe, maybe it was snapped off. And that's the reason we no longer have a screw. Well, I just turned this thing on and pulled up the 240p test suite here on the Sega Genesis. It is an RGBS. And I mean, it's working. 
you can see that the problem here again is that we need a new bezel new back also one of the big issues here is can you see that right there that like dark marking on the tube someone took like a pen like a bic pen or a ballpoint pen and just carved into the screen layer on the crt And then obviously this one does not have good convergence and would need a complete yoke adjustment. Look at the corners. So a lot of a lot of stuff, bad stuff going on with this one. Just look at that corner. It's a lot of separation there. We got blue way off on the right hand side. And then it looks like just everything's out of whack there. Blue and red off on that side now. Down at the bottom, it looks okay. It's just kind of sad that somebody uh, carved that into the screen tube because the tube, I mean, we could probably could have salvaged it and got it good. I don't know though now. Anyway, that's an update to it. Let me turn the power off. And you can see that a little bit better there. You see those markings right in the front? And uh, again, maybe that could come out. Well, we were able to use some spray away glass cleaner and get a lot of that marking off there so that's really good news the tube is in pretty good condition we need to keep it if we possibly can the problem again is the bezel has been really destroyed this is just pieces that broke off you can see where it was the threading that broke the threading part and that's that's not going to be reusable and you can also tell how it was like cross threaded multiple times when the person originally installed this new or, or different tube did some work in here and that's another thing if we look up here this actually has a new CRT installed in September of 2001 so that's cool we should try to keep this tube but when the person installed the tube they didn't do it really right and uh, caused some damage there one of the other things you'll notice if we're looking back here in the back of the tube there's no wedges back in here securing the yoke so that would make sense why the yoke and uh, deflection and uh, convergence looks so bad is that wasn't seated in there like it should be see there should be something down in there and there's obviously no convergence strips or magnets or anything so that's going to have to be reseated and readjusted so if we look over here at kind of the parts and storage area this would be for example the donor shell with the bezel here, as long as this, as long as this bezel doesn't have any problems, it just needs the emblem moved over and needs to be cleaned. But if we look at this tube, which should be similar, if you look at how the factory installed it, you see that they have this nice black RTV silicone here, and then there's this wedge, and these wedges are placed to secure that and make this yoke try to go level against the tube and also not be too close to the tube which can cause more issues so you've got one here one here and there should be one underneath in the bottom unless it's fallen out yep there's still one down in there and that's the pattern that's actually in the service manuals for these it tells you how to or where to set these but it's pretty much one on the bottom one over here and then one over here so we'll have to redo all that to make sure that we can get good convergence because then if we do that right we shouldn't really need more than you know like this one only has a single strip so these 13 inch tubes are a lot easier to get the convergence right on that's a really good example of what an inspection would look like here in my shop and i wanted to go through this one specifically because i will have a very deep dive into a very nice 1344q that's already been serviced and it's in great condition that'll be coming soon so in order to get to that one, I wanted to highlight a very dirty and grungy one that needed a lot of work. Unfortunately, again, this needs mostly cosmetic pieces as far as like the uh, bezel. We're going to need a new one of those, new shell and everything. So that's where um, you have to start talking with the customer on price of this stuff. We're going to have to consider the price of the shell and then the price of me disassembling this and putting it all on the other shell and bezel. Uh, but the good side is it does have a newer tube that's, you know, been installed. 
So we could still have really good internals here and a good tube. Um, unfortunately, the yoke will have to be completely reseated and then all the convergence stuff will have to be redone. So that's gonna add a lot of time and uh, a lot of labor into this job. So you're looking at kind of one of the more expensive uh, jobs. here. I just wanted to showcase an inspection today and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I appreciate your feedback. And I'll see you all next time with some more retro content. So what do you think? This is a gamble worth taking? What would Kenny Rogers say?